for the Velociraptors, we're from Westside, Michigan. Uh, we're going to introduce ourselves real quick. I'm Mike Account. I am a senior. Um, today I'm going to Michigan Tech to become a software engineer, so I took care of most of the uh, computer aspects of this. I did help with other parts of it. Uh, I'm Jeremy Coates. I'm the captain of the Velociraptors. Uh, I focus mainly on the design and construction of the bridge deck. I also help design and construct some of the other stuff with Trevor, and uh, I plan on going to Michigan next year to pursue a career in engineering. I'm Trevor Sultana. I'm also a senior at Lincoln Westland, and you could say I was essentially the chief engineer of this bridge. I, I focus mainly on the towers, the arches, and the construction of the strings with the help of Jeremy. And as you can see, there were like three phases to our design, our whole process of building this bridge. It all began with uh, us brainstorming about mathematical principles and convenience sake, and as we kept brainstorming, we came up with a rough design of what we wanted our bridge to be. And as we move into the next phase, it was a modification. So as a team, we built separate prototypes of each component of our bridge. We tested them, analyzed their shortcomings, and based on what we analyzed, we improved upon the design as a whole. And then that led us into our final design, where we actually, Micah took control. He made a blueprint on CAD. And then I actually drafted out a whole design blueprint that we could follow to build the final bridge itself. There are four big things that we focus on. First, we didn't want anything to be supported only by glue. We wanted uh, different parts of the bridge to touch each other and support each other and rely on each other for strength. Uh, we wanted to spread the forces out as evenly as possible so nothing would have too much force in one spot. And then, lastly, we wanted the bridge to look good. Our bridge consisted of four individually <coughs> constructed and designed components. We had the bridge deck, the towers, the arches, which went go in between and under the towers, and then the cable design itself. The first uh, part is the bridge design. We had a row of trusses, which were a uh, war on truss, which is that W shape you see there. Um, we made the, each side of the tri equilateral or triangles one inch just for convenience sake, because it was hard doing anything else. Um, we uh, strategically placed them where we thought there, we would need them on the ends in between the towers in the middle where we knew the testing pole was going to go through and then right where we knew the edge of the testing block was going to be. Um, there was eight total so we had two on each side and two in the middle. Um, on the top of the bridge we added custom X trusses which were just to create more uh, contact with the actual bridge block so it wouldn't just be pressing on the cross beams. Um, we added extra cross beams, spaced them evenly throughout the length of the bridge that's what we tied our cables to, so they were all evenly spaced out. And then between the top and lower layer of the bridge deck, we added extra supports to keep it, uh, try to keep it from breaking where we didn't have a truss. And then we had, like in this picture, we have just that V, where we actually ended up adding a few more at the end. And as you can see, I kind of took control of the tower design, and that was the second main component of our bridge. And after much research, we decided that the I-beam would be the strongest structure to resist all kinds of forces that the towers would take, mainly from the cables and the bridge coming down. So, as you can see in the diagram above, there's two flanges, and those are essentially to resist horizontal and bending forces, and the web in between the flanges connects them and helps to strengthen the overall tower itself and also bending forces. And as you can see, there's a real-time tower right there, and we have one I-beam structure resting on top of two I-beam structures that are parallel and connected by glue, obviously, and then uh, according to the guidelines of the bridge competition, we notched the pan side panel of the top tower a half inch down into the uh, bottom two I-beam structures to help resist horizontal forces. And as you see those slanted pieces, uh, those also help to serve to resist horizontal forces even more. Much like our uh, tower design, we use the I-beam structure for our arches because they had a lot of strength in them. The, uh, the flanges of the I-beam uh, helped uh, strengthen the forces coming down from the bridge deck. And uh, we wanted contact with the tester pad so that the forces coming down from the deck could be dispersed. Uh, the equation that we used to uh, design our arch was based on y equals the opposite of x squared, which is an ideal parabola. The uh, arches were adjacent to the uh, towers, and the uh, forces from that towers were 
released into the uh, the towers, which uh, just get rid of them. Our cable design. We uh, first what we do is we mathematically calculated the ideal exact length of the cable, which would be from the top of one tower to the other one. But when we once we actually built the bridge and started to attach the cable, we as you can see we drilled holes through the top of each of the towers, uh, knotted it and wrapped it through, wrapped it around twice for extra support, dropped it down across the uh, deck and made it so as close to two inches as we could get to the deck, that's as close as we could get, and then finished it off tying it on the other side as tight as we could. Um, for the actual length when we first were calculating the exact length, we used a variation of the catenary equation, we couldn't use the exact catenary because of the height of the tower, so the tall enough. So use a variation, which we pretty much from trial and error on a graphing calculator, figured out to be this equation. And then after that, we took it, took the derivative and squared it, added it, so or substituted the equation. This is the equation for the arc length of a curve. So we have the curve, we just need to find the exact arc length of it. We took the integral from negative 6.65 to 6.65, because the distance between the towers was 13 and a quarter inches, and found the arc length, which would theoretically be 14.16 inches. That was just a rough estimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the vertical cables, we placed 10 on each side, uh, strategically placed to give as much support to the bridge deck as possible. Uh, we we're made sure that the, uh, the tensions and the strings were as close to it, as equal as possible, so we could avoid any, any twisting effect. We did make a few changes to our, our bridge. We cut the bottom off the arches so it was more contact with the pad. Uh, we, Cut the strings weren't exactly as what we did plan on them, so we just kind of made them fit. Uh, we put notches in the towers to hold the main cable steady, so there's no slipping. Uh, we put a little bit of uh, uh, we put the popsicle sticks underneath the towers for to make it fit the tester pad a little bit better. And we had a few balsa wood pieces next to the towers for a little bit of horizontal resistance. And we raised the main cables up a little higher than we had originally planned. And then there were a few trusses we put underneath. On the other side. And we know that this is centered and focused on building a bridge and testing it, but there is a lot more that we learned throughout the process. Mainly the most important ones, just depending on your partners. I mean, you're a team for a reason, so your members have to do their job essentially. And we specialize in certain areas because in certain areas we were better than others, you could say. So we kind of took over a spot, did our job, and then uh, like work together to see which would be the best way to build it. Another uh, thing we learned, I know it's like common sense, but as we kept building the thing, we realized that our design is never going to be perfect. I mean, it manifested itself gradually over the course of us building it, but we just knew that our design was going to be perfect. And as you can see, construction, it takes precision, time, and patience. Most emphasis on patience because we really underestimated the time it takes to build a bridge like this and to build it soundly. Um, and that's a really minor thing we learned. Popsicle sticks are a pain to cut. I mean, <laughs> just face it. So we, uh, to kind of cut down on the time spent, we used a hacksaw. So we cut literally like 10 popsicle sticks at a time with a hacksaw, we just went at it. And then, uh, and overall we just learned how to build a suspension bridge and all the workings and everything about it. And if you were to ask us if this project was a success, it'd be a unanimous yes. Like earlier, it's much more than a bridge competition. We learned a lot more than just building a simple bridge out of wood and popsicle sticks. Um, essentially, we just got design experience in the field. I mean, we all, we're all interested in building, engineering, that kind of thing, so it was a great eye-opener for us. And uh, we were exposed to modern technology such as CAD, and we also used Model Smart to test the balsa wood structures. And then uh, we realized that research as we research more, we obviously gain knowledge about the subject, but uh, essentially hands-on experience with the bridge itself offered us the most knowledge and we learned so much from just building bridges, prototypes, testing it, and then finally putting everything together. So I, I think my team would agree with me to say that it was a joy to do this competition and I'd say we'd do it again. Right guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the Velocity Raptors and thank you for having us. Any questions? Yeah. Um, first, I guess a comment that, that I think I would agree with your summary that you've learned some lifelong skills and lessons there. It's much more than just building a bridge, really. It is. Um, and if, if 
put a lot of thought into it here, and I'm, I'm thinking back to your modeling uh, that you did um, with the design model, Model Smart that you used. Um, did you actually model in the, the cables in, in that model? I think in uh, Model Smart they don't have cable. They just have yeah. mostly balsa wood structure, so we can really uh, model them. Okay, so that's more of a trial and error. Yeah, right. We tried to make the, the vertical cables as tense as possible, but not pulling the bridges in without being pulled down. So one of the things about yeah. suspension bridges. And we tied the knots in such a way that the more tension they take, the tighter the knot will be, so it'll resist it more. That was the main idea we tried to get across. What was the most challenging component of this I think I can take this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those towers, those things took forever. And I kind of, since I knew like the whole order in which to build them, because we had a specific order to kind of make it easiest as possible. So between me just cutting all those pieces and then having to put everything together while Jeremy worked on the bridge deck and Micah worked on the computer, I'd say the towers were definitely the most troublesome. I think they turned out pretty well though. Is there a load testing yet? Yes. Yeah, it has been. As compared to what you thought you were going to get and how it performed, how did you do? It didn't hold as much as we thought. It performed really well. It got stopped because they said that uh, it was uh, it was like bowing too much or something with the machine, the deflection, yeah. Um, but like when we were done, the guy even said there was nothing that was broken on it, nothing had snapped. It just had seemed to bend, even though it was kind of what our design was designed to do. The strings were just yeah. starting to like pull their weight essentially. We didn't make them completely tight because we knew it was going to bowl a little bit because we didn't want it to crack because we know that's when we were out. So we wanted it to bowl a little bit and then it was going to start to really get tight and that's when like the machine decided to say that it was uh, too much deflection. But we thought it did well, seeing as how it didn't break at all. Anything that you would, uh, sounds like you laid out a pretty good plan, you kind of followed your plan, going back, what would you do? I think we probably would uh, emphasize more support in the middle because that's where like the testing block was and that's really where you make it or break it literally is uh, in the middle where the testing block is. So the more support you have there is probably, it seems to have since we got it tested where you really need to have most of your support. Our towers are, if I may say, probably rock solid <laughs> and, uh, but we obviously needed more support in the middle and so that's probably what we did change if we would have known that that's where we really needed to have it supported. Anything else? No, I think we're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.